Hello again, sausages. Uh, another Afghanistan video from me. I do apologise, but I don't in the same way because these things need to be talked about. These things need to be exposed. It needs to be out there. What Biden has done in Afghanistan is absolutely disgusting and, quite frankly, stupid beyond belief. The guy has no shame. The guy has no, <laughs> no memory, no marbles. He's just, uh, it's not something you'd call a man. He's a career politician. He's not a leader. Anyway, I saw these pictures online and it's a picture of a US helicopter. It's been smashed in. Obviously, look at the windows. The Taliban have uh, kicked 10 bells of shit out of it for some reason, but it's the Taliban. That's what they do. And in front of these, you can see animal cages. And if you look closely inside the cages, you will see, I think, what looks like a German shepherd, um, other breeds of dogs, probably mongrels, crossbreeds, who knows. But apparently, and well, actually it's not apparently, it's true these have been left behind by the US forces. How could they do that? I saw this and I felt absolutely sick. So I went and fact-checked and yeah, it's, it's true. They did actually leave them there. It's a horrendous thing. But um, you'd be pleased to know they haven't been left in their cages. The US Army left them in their cages and it took an organisation called the Kabul Small Animal Rescue to turn up. Here's their statement and uh, release them. I mean, as a soldier, you've had a service dog. They've helped you during your tour. Why the hell would you leave it in a fucking cage in that weather? I mean, there's bottles of water. I assume that's bottles of water. I, I hope they were given to the animals. I really do. I mean, animal cruelty is an unforgivable sin in my opinion god knows why they couldn't just fly them out all right they're service dogs then surely they'd have been you know vetted given injections and make sure they haven't got all sorts of stuff on them to work with the armed forces they'd have been trained and all sorts to do their job sniff out bombs uh, terrorists taliban um it won't be hard to sniff out a taliban i can imagine but the point is all right they've worked with them and just as they've treated most of the Afghan citizens who helped our, oh, the US forces, I'm not sure if they were British either, I doubt the Brits would have done this. Would, they, would the British armed forces have done this? I think we're more of an animal-loving nation than the US, aren't we? Anyway, so this has happened, and you would think that they just take them with them. You know, they work with them, they've been trained. Um, I'd imagine they'd have been you know, medicated and rid of all the diseases and lice and worms, whatever they've got, rabies and and whatnot, and whack them on the plane. But no, look at this photo. They've managed to find space for some bozo's fucking car on a C-130 plane, but no room for these poor dogs. I don't get it. I don't understand all this. I really don't. It's shameful. It's yet another shame on uh, Joe Biden here, the uh, brainless absolutely brainless stupid thick twat of a man who is currently was installed just like a toilet into the white house this year and this is the same guy when the dead u.s servicemen who were killed by the isis isis k whatever the hell that means isis k jesus christ isis terrorist uh, suicide bombs he stood there with his ludicrous wife or the carer in chief Dr. Jill, and she looked as gormless and as plain as ever. She will never, ever be as beautiful and glamorous as the former First Lady, the uh, President, God Emperor Trump's wife, Melania Trump. She'd be nothing, nothing compared to her. And considering she's a doctor, apparently, I don't believe it myself, and she's allegedly married to this twerp in the White House, then if she loved him, she married him, she's his wife, then surely you'd know the symptoms of dementia, and she'd have put a stop to him running uh, as President of the United States. Wouldn't you, if you loved your husband and you knew he had some sort of mental decline condition? Of course you would, but no, not the frumpy, plain Dr. Jill. Oh, I can't stand them, the pair of them. They just, they just look wrong, don't they? They shouldn't be in the White House, the pair of them. Anyway, where was I? Yes, getting thrown off there by uh, Dr. Jill. So while Joe Biden and her were stood there waiting to pay their respects as these poor servicemen, these dead soldiers were carted off the plane. He checked his watch every time. How disgustingly inappropriate and disrespectful of this guy. This guy, I think his time is nearly finished. It's a shame that the US can't call a snap 
election because I think if there was one now, if they didn't have these cheating uh, postal ballots, Trump would walk it yet again and he would sort this mess out. The Taliban, Iran, I can guarantee you North Korea, ISIS-K, whatever the hell they call themselves, they would all fall into line because they fear and respect Trump. I mean, the West is going to hell in a handcart at the moment with everything and this absolute numpty, this tool. And to quote the relative of one of the dead US servicemen that was flown over the other day, this dementia-ridden piece of shit really should be removed from office. But to be fair to Biden, he's not the only tool in the box. We've got our own absolute trumpets right here at the top of the British army. Take a look at this idiot. And how do you feel about collaborating with the enemy when um, they have carried out such atrocities against um, UK military personnel over the years? I think you have to be very careful using the word enemy. Um, I think people need to understand who the Taliban actually are. And of course, what they are, a disparate collection of tribespeople. As President Karzai put it to me only yesterday, they're country boys. Uh, and the plain fact is that they happen to live by a code of honour and a standard which has been their standard for many, many years. It's called Pashtun Wali. It has honour at the heart of what they do. They are bound together by a common purpose, which is they don't like corrupt governance. They don't like governance that is self-serving. And they want an Afghanistan that is inclusive for all. So I think rather than talking Except about... Except women. The, what? Except women. Um, well, again, I think we have to wait and see. I mean, I don't know what they mean. We can't support the, the way that they treat women. We, we, surely. Well... I think you have to listen to what they're saying at the moment, and I think you have to listen to the facts on the ground. I'm saying they that are have definitely, to abide they by are Sharia definitely, law. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's anything that you and I would approve of particularly. I'm just but I do, that. I, absolutely, but I do think that they have changed. I think they recognise that over the course of the last 20 years, Afghanistan has evolved. They recognise the fundamental role that women have played in that evolution. And yes, they at the moment will undoubtedly say that they want to respect women's rights under Islamic law, and that will be a Sharia law. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't allow them to be involved in government and in education and in medicine and those things that they need them to be involved in. So I think we have to be patient. We have to give them the space to show how they are going to step up to the plate. And whether or not we can work with them will very much depend upon how they treat all Afghans. Right, so according to this absolute plonker, who's the head of the British Army at the moment, the... Um, chief of the defence staff, we shouldn't call them the enemy, a desperate collection of country boys. Uh, they've got a code of honour. <laughs> they have standards. <laughs> um, they fought with honour, he says. Oh, my God. And they want an Afghanistan that's inclusive for all. You know, folks, when... I'll tell you what, it's taken this university-educated, Sanders-trained plonker, this absolute twat with medals... Uh, and a very high rank for me to agree with Kay Burley, and that's some achievement. And how could he sit there and said that the Taliban, the enemy for the past 20 years, fought with honour, with standards, when they literally <laughs> blew and shot our boys and girls? Uh, <laughs> fuck, you know. Look, this man is completely out of touch. I know that he's probably towing the government line, and saying what he should be said or saying what he's been told to say by the uh, Tory government. But if this guy, this twerp, this chief of defence staff had any sort of honour and respect for his own troops, the ones who suffered with PTSD, went to Afghanistan, uh, who died, people under his command, who have literally just done all that for nothing and handed the country back to the enemy, the Taliban, and if this asswipe had any honour, he would refuse to toe the government line and say these despicable words, which have literally pissed uh, over every squaddy that served there. And he'd resign, hand in his commission. And as for that stupid statement of saying that the uh, Taliban want in Afghanistan, that's inclusive for all. Well, dude, tell that to the people who are currently getting hung to death by helicopters. Helicopters the US left there, our supposed allies. Tell that to the men, women and children who are being executed outside their homes for collaborating with your soldiers. I mean, my God, what an absolute fucking dickhead. I've worked with idiots like this who are officers, Sanders trained, and they have got no fucking clue. You get the rare one who gets it, who, who can actually lead men.
But this guy, this chief of defence staff, I don't even know his name. I don't even want to know his name. Clearly got to where he is by arse licking and stepping over people. What a horrendous, uh, disrespectful statement to say about the Taliban, the enemy for the past 20 years, a cruel bunch of country boys, as he calls them, that have killed and tortured in the most horrendous, barbaric ways and treat women, their own women, like cattle. How could you sit there and say that? What an absolute fool. Why doesn't he just put a towel on his head and go and fucking join them? Oh, my Lord, it beggars belief, doesn't it? It's no wonder with people like that at the head of our armed forces that we are being laughed at. And soldiers are leaving in droves, ladies and gentlemen. And this has come to me because, obviously, I have people on my channel getting in touch with me about what's happening in the British Army at the moment. I still have friends who serve. And I get told everything. And squaddies don't stay there. There are not many career squaddies there anymore. People turn up, they see how shit it is after four years, and then they leave. And, you know, you wonder why when you see this prick on telly saying shit like this. And it's not going to get any better, folks. It's just going to get worse. The army is woke, OK? Um, Marxism has seeped into our British army like a cancer. And it's doing it in the United States as well. It's in the US Marines. A, I think it was a major or lieutenant colonel dared to demand accountability for what happened in Afghanistan, and he got fired. The only person who kind of answered for all this is some guy who wanted uh, accountability. Accountability with the armed forces uh, stops squarely at the feet of the US president. He's the commander-in-chief. All this is Biden's fault. Those poor dogs getting left in cages uh, is Biden's fault. And thank God there are humanitarians in uh, Kabul who let these dogs out because the Taliban, no doubt, they'd have tortured and killed those dogs as well because that's what these people do, folks. They, they just, there's nothing kind about them. They don't want inclusivity. They are a religious zealot type um, full of misogyny. They're misogynistic, cruel people. And we're meant to have diplomatic ties with them. Jesus Christ. I don't know, whatever next. Anyway, that's my video. Excuse me for the rant, but there we go. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I can imagine what you're all going to say. And if you'd like to support my channel, then you can buy me a beer. Because by buying me a beer, neither YouTube nor Google get their left-wing biased mitts on whatever you decide to send me. So screw them and thank you. And to everyone who has already bought me a beer, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So please comment, share and subscribe. And until my next one, Roger Trout.